uh, but it is Christmas Day 2020, which means it is the premiere of Wonder Woman 1984, and I couldn't let this moment go without dropping my two cents on this latest superhero movie to hit our screens. Uh, so, so let's get down to it. Um, now normally when I drop these little reviews, I try my best to keep it spoiler free, um, and just give you a nice sense of idea of what you're going to go see when you go experience the movie yourself. But this time I'm going to have to drop a spoiler, completely do so. Um, and it's clearly because of the times that we live in that I'm going to have to do so. So you understand where I come from on how I feel about this film. And it is conflicted. I am very conflicted. And I kind of knew I was going to be that way hearing the buzz beforehand. And I'm leaving just as conflicted. Kind of like when I saw Thor Ragnarok where I'm like, what what happened? What did I just see? Um, same thing here. Um, it's a completely different movie than the first one, which I loved. The plot structure is different. The feel is different. The tone is different. Not just the settings. Um... So that's why it's a completely different experience. It kind of teases you in the fact that you think it kind of feels like the first one with the opening sequence with a young Diana and the mascara. And then it really rips that away from you. Um, kind of horrifically dumps you a completely new world. And it kind of goes off from there. So again, there's things I loved about certain scenes that I enjoyed. The way they filmed it. Um, the little extra Easter eggs they threw in. I love those parts. But as always, when you get a dual villain storyline, you're not getting a complete story. You're getting halves of two separate stories. And while each villain, uh, the Barbara Minerva had way more, I don't want to say gravitas, um, but you got where she was coming from. You see how she went the route that she did. Um, and you don't blame her necessarily. You go, oh, I totally get it. I totally understand it. Why? And I really love the friendship that they were building between her and uh, Diana. Um, so that one was kind of satisfying. The Maxwell Lord, though, that's the one where I'm going to have to drop the spoiler, which is his whole intent is that he wants everything and he, nothing is good enough. He needs to have more. He needs to have more needs to have more to the point that the world is about ready to explode in chaos and it is exploding in chaos and I'm thinking they're making him too powerful I couldn't see how they were going to let Diana defeat him he was getting too powerful so I'm going oh gosh they're gonna have to come up with something huge and massive what could this be and it wasn't huge and massive and it was actually really a cop out and completely of all the fantastical things that happen in this film that you have to separate, you know, your reality. Well, that's, that couldn't happen for real. Of course, it's a superhero film. It's not going to happen in real life. But she defeats them by tapping into his love for his son and he gives up his power. And there's no fucking way. That, would, that is the most unrealistic thing of this entire film, was somebody who was so greedy would give it up for their child. And you know this is true because every flipping day I see hundreds on this device, hundreds and thousands of people who probably aren't even a percentage of greedy as this character was, who would give up anything for their children. We see it every day. In this world, we are seeing every day people not doing the barest minimum for somebody that they love. So there's no way this guy's going to give up all of his power knowing he will have to face repercussions for his son. Not plausible in the slightest. So it was a cop out and it just kind of ruined like, oh, that's... <sighs> I needed something... It needed to, they needed to not have made him so powerful. They needed to have it. He needed to have an Achilles heel that wasn't hoping he would have some affection for his child because there's no way. There's no way. And so it was kind of very much a, oh, wah, 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 ah, very deal or no deal. They chose door three and it was dog food and rubber banana boat. Pool floaties. I mean, it was just like, oh, oh, oh. So, did I like it? 
uh, I liked parts of it. There's things I enjoyed about it. There's fight scenes that I enjoyed. There were little callbacks that I enjoyed. We fight again. Um, so those parts I liked. But just that whole storyline was just, ugh. Oh, they did them dirty. They did them dirty. So, should you go see it? If you can see it while it's free, hell yeah, go check it out now. Um, will I go see it in the theater when it comes out? I so thought I was going to. I so thought I was going to. I don't know. If I go see it in the theater when we're able to, uh, I may, if I can have lots of drinks, when I go do it and make it just totally fun. Um, so... I don't know if that helps you out at all, whether or not you're going to see it. But um, if you're a true Wonder Woman lover, go check it out just to get all the little bits of awesomeness that they do display during the time. And I might have to go back and see what other Easter eggs they drop, but I do not see it all. So, happy holidays. Happy New Year's. Please stay safe. Please stay healthy. Please think of your fellow man in this these times, these times. And I hope I come back to see you again with more movie funness. So until next time, y'all.